نسألك وأنت الأسماء نأمل عفوك سبحانك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين فاسلي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters who are listening we are doing the 99 names of Allah Azza wa Jal and we've reached the name Mu'min so هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن so we've covered the other names, we've come to the name Mu'min. Now in the um, actual book itself of Imam Qurtubi, I've, um, I think the, the word Mu'min has been a bit of a difficulty for me to find it in this actual book itself. I don't know whether there's been a misprint or whether he's actually left it out, but I went to his tafsir, tafsir Qurtubi, and I've uh, got, got from there the tafsir of Mu'min in Surah Al-Hashr, what, what he has done. And also the following name as well, which is Muhaymin, both of these names, I've taken the tafsir of it from the from tafsir uh, Al-Qurtubi, which is his tafsir in many different volumes. <coughs> so, the word Mu'min, Allah Azza wa Jal bin Mu'min, it, one of the meanings of Mu'min is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the one that, give, He is the one that testifies to His messengers for their truthfulness. And also to their miracles that they have uh, performed. And Allah gives the truth to the believers for what He has promised them in terms of giving them reward, in terms of giving them uh, the, the, the different uh, delights that He has kept for them in the next life. And Allah also makes His promise come true regarding the disbelievers in terms of the punishment that he has left for them in the next world. So that's one of the meanings of mu'min, which is musaddiq, one who gives, one who shows the truthfulness and one who will eventually make it apparent um, that what he has promised will come true. The other meaning of mu'min is to give, to, to give protection. To give protection. So, when Allah Azza says he is mu'min, it is just as in Surah Quraysh, when Allah said in Surah Quraysh, آمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ Which means that Allah gives, Allah has given the people, He has given, He has fed them food and He has saved them from hunger. And at the same time, he has given them amanahum min khawf. He has given them protection from having fear, or he has provided them with amnesty instead of having a, a state of conflict. Instead of having a state of conflict. Now, this Allah has said clearly about the people of Quraysh. So Allah has said that this vicinity around um, the Kaaba, this whole place, I have given it protection from any fear. So when you go to the Kaaba you won't have the fear that you will have in any other city that anyone could sort of attack you or there could be bloodshed uh, Subhanallah al Allah has given a lot of peace and protection to the people who are around there now and again there has been a bit of conflict there and it is expected that anywhere in the world it can happen so now and again there has been a bit of, bit of it but generally it is next to nothing in terms of conflict in that, in that place so this word of this word from Surah Quraysh, which is um, the, the ayah number four of Surah Quraysh, near the end of the Quran, this shows that the second meaning of mu'min, Allah bin mu'min, is to give protection. And he gives protection to those who are close to him. And he will save them from the oppression of those people who are trying to um, oppress them. The other the thing that Imam Mujahid has said, that Allah Azza wa Jal, him being mu'min, or him being a person who has the quality of, of mu'min, or of himself calling himself mu'min, is that he has, he has declared himself in Surah Al-Imran, 
in ayah number 18, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu. Allah Himself declares and He has testified that He is only the only one God and there is no other deity besides Him. Because He has done that and He is the only one that has, He is the only one truly worthy of having a, a single, single sort of um, existence in his being that no one is equal to him that itself is the, is him being mu'min meaning that he has given this declaration Ibn Abbas rahimahullah he has said that when there will be this this is a statement of Ibn Abbas of the Allah he says when the when the day of judgment will come Allah Azza wa he will take the people of Tawheed, the people of the oneness of God, monotheists, he will take them out of the fire. وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ يَخْرُجْ مَنْ وَافَقَ إِسْمُهُ إِسْمَ النَّبِي And one of the first, and this, this is a hadith, um, but one of the first ones that will come out will be the people whose, whose names will be similar to the name of, of Rasulullah wasallam, until no one will be remaining inside there whose name is the same as or similar to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and then Allah azza wa will say to the rest of them antumul muslimuna wa ana salam wa antumul mu'minuna wa ana al-mu'min that you are all people who have been submitted or people who have submitted themselves to Allah azza wa and I am the one who gives peace wa antumul mu'minun you are the people who, who are believers, وَأَنَا mu'min, And I am the one who gives protection, or I am the one who has saved you from this, this uh, d- destruction. So, because of that, Allah Azza wa Jalla, I mean in this hadith, it clearly uses the word mu'min. Nevertheless, the, the actual hadith itself, the authenticity, I don't have the um, um, record of that in the, in the tafsir that I ta- have taken it from. I wouldn't be surprised if the if the authenticity of that wasn't too strong of this particular hadith. Nevertheless, what we understand from this word mu'min is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives protection. Now His protection is that in many, um, there, there are similar names that will come up, uh, which like for example Al-Hafiz uh, and so on, but Al-Mu'min itself is a protection that Allah Azza wa Jal will give, but it has a link clearly with the Iman that we have. Because we are Mu'minun. So since we are Mu'minun and we are believers, Allah Azza wa Jal gives us protection. How, how does He do that? Well, one thing He has said in the Holy Quran in Surah Tariq is, in kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz. That Allah gives for every single person, human being, He has given them a protector, which is an angel. And that angel protects over them. So even at moments when we find moments of conflict, or moments even of danger where something could harm us, within seconds if we are saved from the conflict, this means that Allah has protected us and He has given us this protection. You can also find um, in Surah Al-Ra'd, where Allah has, has said clearly that with every single human being He has appointed protectors, hafadah. He has given them protectors, and these are angels that protect us. So this protection that Allah provides is only from Himself. But I believe that the mu'min, when Allah uses the word mu'min, it is more of an internal protection. And it, it has that clear link with our internal iman belief. So Allah Azza wa Jal protect us, protects us in many ways, but one of the meanings that Allah gives is the internal. Why am I saying that? Is because when Allah has used the word uh, uh, or the phrase "Amanahum min khawf," "Amanahum min khawf," this word "Amanahum min khawf" in Surah Quraysh is to do with Allah protecting a thing of the inside. Khawf is a fear that you have on the inside. Okay? You have you have fear of something, it is not something that you must you must make apparent. So Allah protects you from that. So things that are internal Allah protects, perhaps that's where He calls Himself Mu'min. And things on the outside of ourselves where Allah protects, that's when Allah's name Hafiz will, will come into um, in, into place. Allahu Alam. So that's His name Mu'min. The next... Um, 
name in the Asma'ullah al-Husna in that famous hadith is Al-Muhaymin. So, huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin. Now, Muhaymin, one of the first places for this word Muhaymin to be used in the Qur'an is in the sixth juz, in Surah Ma'idah, ayah number 48. Surah Ma'idah, the fifth surah, and ayah number 48. Well, Allah Azza wa Jal has said, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ We have revealed to you a book, بالحق, with the truth. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ It is an affirmation of all the other revelations we've given before it, meaning the Torah, the Injil, the Psalms, the Bur. And this book that we've revealed to you, Muhammad, Muhayminan alayhi, it is Muhaymin. So the word that Allah has used to describe himself as Muhaymin, he has also used the same word for the Qur'an, that the Qur'an is Muhaymin. فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ So, O oh Prophet, you should now command with what Allah has revealed and you should not follow any of the desires uh, of, the, of these other people from, uh, the, which, which move away from the truth that has been revealed from you and so on. This is the ayah that Allah has revealed uh, and when we have in Surah Ma'idah. Now, what does this word Muhaymin mean in Surah Ma'idah? And also, what reference does it have with Allah Azza wa Jal? Now, Imam Qurtubi says that Muhayminan alayhi means that the Qur'an is something which is high. Uh, Qur'an is something which has a high status. And this is according to not only it being the best of the books, but also because the most reward is, is in the Qur'an. And, and we know that. So that is one meaning of Muhaymin, of being something which is high. The second meaning of Muhaymin is the one that is a witness. The one that is a witness. Imam Qatada rahimahullah has said this, that it is something that is observing. As a, as a witness, it is observing. Al-Mushahid or Al-Raqib, the one who is observing. So, the Qur'an is an observer. How is the Qur'an an observer? Because throughout our lives, the Qur'an will observe us until we get to the end of our life. And when we die, the Qur'an will actually come out as a person. And it will either become hujja laka or alayka, which Rasulullah said, that either, either it, will, it will become a, uh, an argument for you or an argument against you on the Day of Judgment. So it is, the Qur'an is observing us at the moment how we are uh, practicing our deen. And the other, me- this meaning clearly to Allah Azza wa Jal would mean that Allah Azza wa Jal being Muhaymin is observing us. So the first mean- meaning of Muhaymin with Allah Azza wa Jal would be that He is high. And he, there's nothing higher than him and there's nothing more we, we can find <coughs> that is exalted than Allah Azza wa Jalla. He is the one that is the highest. And the second would mean that Allah is observing us. <coughs> and it also means that the, that the Qur'an is a source of a, a means to be, to, to, to be a observer of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if you want to find a means of judging the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can go to the quran and you will find that you will be able to observe the Rasul- rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through the quran so just as we've got that hadith when somebody asks aisha radiyallahu anha describe to me the character of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she says that kana khuluquhu al quran if you want to summarize the entire character character of the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you must go to the quran so what does that show that shows that the quran is if you want to put it in other words the Qur'an is the deen of Allah in terms of a book and Rasulullah is the deen of Allah in terms of a living, living entity. Of a living entity. So they are both um, in, in a sense um, 
or specifically the Quran is in a sense one that 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 is in a, in observance of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life and characteristics. The Quran is that. Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma he has said that muhayminan alayhi another meaning of that is mu'tamin which means that this the Quran is a source of truth and a, a, a source of a, 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 a source of trust a source of trust mu'tamin alayhi means a source of trust so that means that if you go to the Quran, you will find that the Quran will, will be the source that you can use as a trust to decide what was truthful in the books before. We don't go to the, to the Injil or the Torah, the Bible, whatever you want to call it. We don't go to that to confirm what, what is in the Quran. But we do the other way around. We go to the Quran to find the, the, the truthfulness of these other books. So that means that the Quran is the, is the source of trust. So when Allah has said, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْ It means that the Quran is the one that will be the basis of anything that you can trust in all the revelations that Allah has given. Imam Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, the, the Sahabi, and Hassan al-Basri radiallahu rahimahullah, he has said that the muhaymin also means ameen, which is just as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi was given a title that he was al-ameen, the trustworthy, the Qur'an has got that, um, that, that status as well, that it is uh, trustworthy. Now, haymana yuhaymin, the word that muhaymin comes from, haymana yuhaymin in Arabic, means that something is a guarding protector over something else. So from this, if you look at the linguistic meaning, what you will come to is uh, that the Qur'an being muhaymin means that it is protecting. The protecting the original revelation which Allah had revealed in the other books, the Qur'an is a protector of that because no one will be able to change the Qur'an. And one of the tafsirs which Imam Mujahid has said of this ayah is that the Qur'an, uh, th- though uh, Allah has said, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ دَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنَ عَلَيْهِ That Muhaymin alayhi could be referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which means that he is the one which is trusted with the Qur'an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one who is trusted with the Qur'an. Now all these meanings going back to Allah azza wa jal would mean that Allah is, Allah is the, the highest, Allah is the one that Allah is the one that is watching over and he is observing and Allah Azza wa Jal is the one of trust is the one of trust so all these meanings come in muhaymin so this is the this is what we have of the name of Allah Azza wa Jal muhaymin so huwa Allah alladhi la ilaha illa hu الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز yeah, العزيز so if you please if you try and memorize this with me because we're doing maybe two or three names uh, at the most a week so if you if you memorize it with me uh, then you would have memorized uh, uh, all the 99 names of Allah Azza wa Jalla and this will be a means for you to get to Jannah according to the hadith that we have gone through. So this, this name now is Aziz. <coughs> now Aziz, what does, what does the name Al-Aziz have uh, in terms of significance and what does it mean? One of the things we find in um, which Imam Qurtubi is now giving us and, and telling us about is that Aziz can be used for those um, for, for beings other than Allah Azza wa Jal. So when Allah has said in the Holy Quran in Surah Yusuf, ayah number fifty-one, qalat Aziz al haq that the wife of the, the the minister said, now the truth has become absolutely clear. So this Aziz, the word Aziz in this ayah has been used for a minister or someone with high authority in Egypt at that time when Yusuf salam was there. And Allah used the word Aziz for, for him. So it can be used for someone other than Allah Azza wa Jal. However, when, whenever, Allah use, when, whenever you will find 
that Allah's name, for example, you got Ar-Rahman with Alif Lam in the beginning. You got Ar-Rahim with Alif Lam. Al-Malik Alif Lam. All of them have Alif Lam in the beginning. Why do you have Alif Lam there? Either it is because Allah is, is using this for Hasr. What does Hasr mean? Hasr means that He is now excluding everybody else out of this. So it means that He alone has this quality. Either it means that. One of, the, one of the means. Or so the second reason why Allah uses Alif Lam in the beginning of all of His names is because it is to show that He is distinct from His creation or from others. So in this case it would mean that somebody can be Aziz other than Allah, but Allah is clearly distinct and is clearly um, different from anyone else that might show a bit of a quality of, of Izza. So one, one thing is, if you say Azza Ya'uzzu in Arabic, Azza Ya'uzzu, because there are different ways of looking at the word uh, Aziz, it means to dominate. It means to dominate. It means to be in charge. It means to have a have a an authority which no one else has an authority over. So, so dominating is a fact that Allah Azza wa Jalla has He has, and the meaning of that has been used in the Quran in, in Surah Sad, in Surah Sad, the thirty eighth Surah of the Quran, Ayah number twenty three. You will find that there is a story. Uh, of Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam where there's different individual there's two different individuals that come to him and they are complaining now this just to give you a brief um, account of that story is that Dawood alayhi salam he used to spend very long moments in his chamber um, worshipping Allah azza wa jal and he was very happy and proud of the fact that he got this he has got this privilege that he can he can um, he can remember Allah Azza wa Jalla. He can praise Him for such long periods. But obviously, all of this should lead to the thank of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And he fell a little bit short in the fact that he didn't he didn't have that full appreciation and thank of Allah Azza wa Jalla at that particular moment. So Allah wanted to teach him a slight lesson. He wanted to teach him lessons. So what happened is that when he was in the chamber and he was um, remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, um, two brothers came into his chamber and one of them had climbed over the actual wall itself and he dropped in. And when Dawud alayhi salam, he saw that he was quite, he was taken aback by that. So he interrupted his, his whole um, you know, remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he said, look, this is, this is my brother. Two of them came, so one of them said, this is my brother, he has 99 ewes, or you know, um, female sort of sheep, he has 99 of them, um, I have only one, and he wants to take my one, and he's trying to also, uh, uh, you know, he's trying to take it, and the reason why he's able to do all of this is, عَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ the word, this is the, this is the word which is very close to the word Aziz. Azani fil khitab. What does that mean? That means that he overpowers me in speech. He dominates me in argumentation. I'm not able to um, overcome him in any argumentation. So Dawud alayhi salam sat there and he said, okay, he said, no, this is not right. Zalamaka uh, akhuk, or you know, your real brother is, um, is oppressing you and he shouldn't, he shouldn't basically um, do this. And while he's doing all of this, Sayyidina Dawud alayhi salam, it comes to his mind, Subhanallah, Allah has done this so that he can show me that I should, I should always be thankful for the long moments He's given me without interruption. He has sent these two individuals to interrupt me in this time so that I come to my senses. And then that's when He went straight into Ruku to Allah Azza wa Jal. And He bowed down to Allah and He thanked Him. And, he, and you know, it was like a forgiveness, uh, seeking forgiveness from Allah. That Allah, you know, I won't be ever think that I am the one who has got this privilege. No, 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 you're the one who gave me this privilege. So this made him very humble in front of Allah Azza But coming back to this, what Imam Khurtubi is quoting is, Azani in this ayah in Surah Saad, um, in ayah number 23, is what? Is to dominate and to overpower one another. 
and some uh, qira'ah azani instead of azani which shows that it's a, it's a mutual uh, way of dominating or trying to dominate one another so that's one meaning of it another meaning of of aziz again all of these come from the root word azza ain za zai zai azza and ya'azzu bi fath al ain which is azza ya'azzu what does that mean it means quwa and shidda it means that someone has power and force and might might power and force what will that mean that means that that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is forceful, He is one who is mighty, He is one with power, and He can, he can um, you know, do anything He wants through his, through his power. The first meaning would mean that He dominates us, dominates our affairs. That's the first meaning of Aziz. Second meaning of Al-Aziz is that He, um, he has power, and one of the uh, one of the ayats that in the Quran that has a clear link to this meaning is in Surah Yasin, uh, ayah number fourteen. Surah Yasin, ayah number fourteen, where Allah has said, "Fa'azzazna bithalis." Fa'azzazna bithalis. What does that mean? That means that when Allah has sent two prophets to a certain, um, He sent two prophets to a certain um, city, and He first sent one. Then he sent a second one, but when the people didn't listen, then Allah sent within the same city, while the other two were preaching, Allah backed them two up, and He strengthened them, and He gave them this, this um, dignity with a third one. With a backing, a backing and adding extra power to. He said, فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثِ when I sent my third prophet to join the other two prophets who were already preaching, Azazna, I backed them up. I, I strengthened their power that they already had. I gave them extra power. I gave them extra backing. So that is the third meaning of Iz, Izza and the third meaning of Aziz, which is that Allah gives us the extra power and extra strength and he backs us up when he wants to and um, therefore you become Aziz or you become a person who has now received the backing of Allah who has now received some power through the power or the backing of the power that Allah has given you Okay. So even the um, if if you have a a piece of earth in Arabic, when you have a piece of earth which is really solid, a solid hard piece of ground in Arabic, you call it izaz. You give it the name izaz, which is which means that it's solid. So the one solidity of making something solid or solidifying something, this is a third meaning of al aziz, which Allah Azza wa Jal does for His servants. Another meaning is when you have something which becomes rare, something becomes rare, and it becomes difficult to find this thing, it becomes difficult to find it, then that becomes a haziz. It becomes very sort of um, valuable. Something becomes valuable when? When is something valuable? It is only valuable when something is rare. So, um, precious stones. Precious stones are valuable because you cannot find precious stones easily. They're not easily available. So something which is not easily available has a, a mark, distinct mark amongst all the other things around it. So that's when this person will be called Aziz. So one of the, th- one of the things that the Arabs used to, used to call, when they used to call a person Aziz is when you can't get to that person easily. So for example, when, when Allah used that in Surah Yusuf, and He said, قَالَ تُمْرَأْتُ Aziz, The minister of a whole city, it's not going to be easy for you to get to that minister so easily. It's not going to be very easy. He has a very busy schedule, and he is going to something so someone who is who is not easy to get to, because obviously he's he's got a high status and so on. So this this would make this what this if you take this meaning, it would mean that Allah Azza wa Jal is one that he, he is. I mean, we know that we can easily get to him, we can always, always easily make dua to him, but who is the one that can easily make Allah 
listen to their dua straight away. That's not easy. That's not easy. That's what makes Allah Aziz. Which is that, okay, there's, there's millions and billions of people making dua to Allah every single day. Muslims, non-Muslims. But who can reach Allah? In the sense that, who can get their call answered? Allah Azza wa Jal has said in, um, uh, it's in a hadith of Muslim, لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَا There are certain servants of Allah on the earth, that if they were to say, Wallahi, this would happen, Allah would make it happen. They, they wouldn't have to give any compensation for their, for their oath that they've taken. Because Allah, Allah loves them and they're close to Him, so He will make sure that His, His, love, His, His beloved servants, if they want something, they desire something, that will happen. Now, how many people have you got like that? That can easily reach Allah Azza wa Jal? And that is, that is one. Or it could mean that in, in His being, no one can get actually close to Him. Okay, fine. In terms of Allah being imminent, or in terms of us being able to make dua for Him, we can all make dua for Him. Allah is close to us in many different ways. He is Rahim to us and so on. That's fine. But in terms of anyone coming in His presence is not easy. Musa tried to see Allah and he fell to the ground. And on the, uh, the, the angels, even Jibreel salam, he couldn't even on Mi'raj go close to Allah. He said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he said, this is it. That's the end of me getting close to Allah. If I go any further, then my, my wings will burn because of the awe that Allah Azza wa has. And because of His presence, I will not be able to bear it. So you now go and Allah Azza wa He lifted our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Himself through His Qudra and His power without having the Buraq at that time, without having the assistance of Jibreel uh, at that time. He lifted His Prophet towards Him to a closeness, whatever it was. And then Allah Azza wa He spoke to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mi'raj. So this shows that again, and only, uh, only on the Day of Judgment people will be able to see Allah if He makes to some people He will allow them to see Him. And only in Jannah he will eventually allow everyone to see him. This is Allah showing that he is not difficult. Uh, sorry, he, he is, it is not easy to get to Allah Azza wa Jal to see him and to be in his presence. It is not easy. So that's another, another meaning. Another meaning of Al-Aziz is to be noble. To be noble. There's another. Uh, to be noble and to have dignity. To have dignity. Um, uh, and not to, you know, the opposite of being humble, uh, opposite of someone being disgraced, not just humble, sorry, disgraced rather. Someone, on, on the one side you've got someone who's disgraced, and some, you know, on the other one you've got someone who's dignified. So to be dignified, to have dignity, is another meaning of Aziz, and the, Qur- the Quranic ayah which refers to this is in Surah Munafiqun. Um, surah number 63, ayah number 8. لَإِنْ رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ This was a statement made by one of the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Ra'is al-Munafiqeen, the head of the hypocrites in, when he was in a certain battle uh, and he, they were coming back towards Medina, he made a statement and he said that when we get back to Medina, those of us with true dignity will take out and exile from Medina those of them that are wretched and disgraced. What he meant by that statement is that when I get back to Medina, I'm so fed up with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm so fed up with him that I'm going to kick him out. I'm going to exile him from Medina. That's what he meant by that statement. But Allah then followed that. Subhanallah. Allah followed that by saying what? He said, لِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةِ That Allah has got all dignity. Dignity doesn't belong to anyone, but it only belongs to Allah, وَلِرَسُولِهِ And to His Messenger, وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ To the true believers, وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But the hypocrites, they do not, they do not know this. They do not know this. So, this, let me just quote to you the actual verse itself because it's coming later on. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That's, that's the verse. And it's in Munaf- Surah Munafiqun, ayah number 8. You will find that in ayah number 8. What does that mean? That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He, 
you know, you know what you could have is you could have someone playing games with you, and they want to disgrace you, they want to shame you, embarrass you, they want to make you ashamed. But if you are with Allah and Allah wants to show His dignity, there is no one, absolutely no one that can take you down. I was just thinking the other day, Subhanallah. If you look in history, Islamic history, if you look at the time of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, and you know, in this in these lessons we've gone through his whole story. I'm not going to go through that. But you think about in his time, in his city, in his city, the 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 king that was in charge, what did he do? He silenced all the ulama and all the different scholars over this issue about the Qur'an. Is the Qur'an the word of God or is it a separate entity from God? What is it? Is it part of God or not part of God? That's what the whole issue was. And Imam Ahmad al you find that he was alone. He was alone. And all the ulama, some of the ulama that were with him, they started to make ta'wil. They started to make, you know, statements that are not saying lies, but they were getting out of trouble. And there was two of them that were with him, and in the end, even those two gave in, and he was the only one that was left. Now, he got tortured, and he got, you know, they, they wanted to mock him and embarrass him, so they used to lash him ten lashes a day. For so many days they did this. And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, if you, if you look at it, in the end, if you look in the books of history, whose name has survived that time? Whose name do we still remember till today? We still remember the name of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah. Whose name, Imam Malik rahimahullah, there was a time when he had difficulty in his time and they, you know, they pulled out his arms from, from its sockets. If you read, look in the history, you'll find that. But whose name lives on? Imam Malik rahimahullah, his name, his name lives on. But the people who did that to him, do you have a reference for any of their names? No. Even if you look in the books of history, it's very difficult to find their names. Very difficult. Allah did not even keep their names in history that we may remember them in any way. Allah even didn't do that. Most of them, you will not find their names. But Allah will keep the names of the ones that He, he gives dignity to. And this is, subhanAllah, this is Allah Azza wa Jal that He gives dignity. So if you look at the munafiqeen, you will find most of their names we don't know. Some of the names we do know. Most of the munafiqeen in Rasulullah's time, we don't know who they were. But who do we know? Well, we know the names of the majority of sahabs who were around the Prophet ﷺ for a long period of time. Majority of the companions, we know their names. Why? Because Allah wanted to dignify them. Allah wanted to give them izzah and dignity. So, when we, you might find in life that someone's trying to make life difficult for you, but if you stick with the truth and you stick with what Allah has told you to do, you will find eventually that you will be the one that will shine in the end. And that your enemies will be disgraced because Allah does not... There's a point... There's a certain point Allah will take certain, say, He will take people of falsehood, but there's a breaking point you will come to when Allah will just break your enemies. He will do that. And He won't break them one go. He might break them slowly. He might break them slowly mentally. Then He might break them, you know, physically, or He might break them financially. But He will do that. So don't, don't ever think that the believer, just because you are in a situation where someone's trying to disgrace you, and you're sticking to the truth, you're sticking to your beliefs, you're doing what Allah has said, don't ever think that Allah will not, you know, Allah will not look at you and do anything for you. Because if you end up, you know what's the worst case is? The worst case is that you end up in the next life, and throughout your life you've gone through misery. Throughout your life you've gone through misery. Someone's made your life horrible, someone made your life miserable. But you did the, the best and you had sabr or you had patience. If you get to the next life, Allah has said, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ He will reward you on the day of judgment because of the patience that you have had in a way that is unlimited. Unlimited. What does that mean? I mean, you know when you receive a contract from a phone. What do you do? You say, you say, you know, how many minutes have I got? How many text messages a month have I got? How many megabytes download have I got from the internet? And so on, yeah? So they'll tell you that you've got 700 minutes, and you've got three, you've got maybe a thousand texts, and, that, and you start bargaining, yeah? Imagine 
On the day of judgment, everyone else, Allah will say, okay, you did this many salahs, you did this many times this, so I'm going to give you this much, and you've got that much for that, and this many du'as, and this many dhikrs, and this many times you've helped people, and this, that, 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 that. These are all measured for you. But there will be one group of people on the day of judgment, when they come, and they, Allah will say, you know what, unlimited. You know when you have like, Three, they say to you, how many text messages? They say unlimited text messages, unlimited you know, numbers. You can ring anyone you want, anytime you want, 24-7, any network, any line you want. Right? And that's proper unlimited. Uh, internet, unlimited. You can download however much you want. He said, Unlim- are you sure? Un- yeah, yeah, unlimited. So it's the same thing on the Day of Judgment with the Sabirun. Those people who have really been patient. And they've gone through a lot of misery and Allah has decided not to give them you know a, a you know great overpowering status over their enemies in this world those people will have unlimited reward allah said in the quran you you ajran bi hisab reward allah said you take unlimited reward which means what which means jannah al firdaus they get to the highest part of jannah because of the of the sufferings that they've gone through in this world now so, so this, these were different meanings that I've said so far of Al-Aziz. Another meaning of Al-Aziz is the one who gives dignity to others. The one who, who gives dignity to others. So they say that Al-Aziz fa'il bima'na muf'il. Which means that you've got in Arabic alim bima'na mu'lim. Sometimes you can say that you say adabun alim. Which means it is a punishment that is alim, which is what? Tormenting. But it's mu'lim, which means that it will be tormenting for others. It's the same way, Aziz bimana mu'iz. Aziz, uh, al Aziz, uh, Allah's, Allah's name Aziz means that he gives dignity to others. And one of the meanings of al Aziz. So Imam Qurtubi says that these are many meanings that of, of Allah Azza wa Jal. One other meaning, uh, if you want to find the meaning of Allah being dominant and being absolutely in authority and power, then you look in Surah Jathia, um, ayah number 2, Hamim, Tanzilul Kitabi min Allah al-Aziz al-Hakim. This is a revelation of a book from Allah who is the absolute powerful one so, uh, and the dominating one. And all these meanings, they all relate to Allah Azza wa One of the meanings of Al-Aziz is that you will find nothing that is similar, similar to him. And this is, this is Al-Aziz, this is Allah Azza wa that there's nothing similar to him in any, in any way. And all the meanings that I've just described to you of what? Of Allah having power. This is very clear in, in Allah Azza wa Allah having nothing similar to him. Allah being the noble one. Allah being some, someone who's exalted and high. Allah being the one that is Mumtani' alladhi la yuram fahu yadullu sadihan ala al-malik al-a'la al-qahir al-samad Which means that Allah is the one that prevents. So if He wants to prevent something, He can do it. And that's one of the meanings in Al-Aziz. And one we've just covered which is that He is the one that gives to someone dignity. To izzu man tasha wa to zillu man tasha. You can give dignity to who you want. You can disgrace whoever you want. And that's one meaning that refers to Al-Aziz. And... Another one is that Allah Azza wa Jal, because everything else besides Him has to have hope in His pleasure. And they have to fear His wrath and punishment. That makes Him Aziz. That means Al-Aziz, which is He is the one absolutely, absolutely dignified and full of dignity because everything else comes back to Him. And one other meaning of Aziz is... To find, to find difficult. What that means is, in, in, in the Quran in Surah Tawbah, ayah number 128, there is a, there is a, uh, a reference to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Azizun alayhi ma anittum. The things you find burdensome, O oh believers, the thing, things you find burdensome on yourselves, these are difficult for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Azizun alayhi. He finds it difficult that his ummah is going through burden. It makes it difficult for him. So that's one of the meanings. And that also can refer to Allah in the, in the sense that he does not like to see. He does not like to see his close ones going through trouble. And in a hadith of Bukhari, it clearly says that one of the difficult things for Allah to do to his wali is to take his soul away. 
it says clearly in the hadith of Qudsi in Bukhari. And one of the diff- it means what? It's not like Allah finds it difficult the way we find it difficult. No. It means that Allah, Allah does not like to hurt his close ones. Because death is something which, any, when anyone goes through death, it's hurtful. Anyone, even Rasulullah when he went through death, you can see, read the description of what Prophet went through, is hurtful. So, for a close one of Allah to go through that state of hurt, Allah Azza wa Jal sympathizes in some way with them. This is one of the meanings of, of Aziz. We're not saying that this is in any way similar to his makhluk. To his creation, please don't get me wrong. When we say Allah is Rahim or He has mercy, we can have mercy on one another, but it is no way similar to one another. So when we say that we find it difficult to to see someone in burden, in in, in no way has this got any similarity to Allah Azza wa Jal that we can relate our feelings to Allah, no way. So please don't make any similarities from us to Allah. But it gives us a way of a a, a, a way of understanding some of the meanings of what, it, what Allah Azza wa has, has kept in, in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So, one thing that Allah does in terms of Him giving His protection, if you want to see in Surah Hajj, um, Surah number 22, Ayah number 38 is, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدَافِعُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا in terms of Allah being Al Aziz, He gives, He will, He will give defense. He will provide defense for the believers. You know, the whole earth would have been corrupted if Allah Azza wa hadn't provided this kind of protection. So He will do that through His might and through His through His authority of dignity and power. Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah, has mentioned that Al Aziz, there's three things that will, will give you the quality of anything that is Aziz, Al-Aziz. He says three things have to come into existence. Number one is that it has to be rare to find, which we've already covered. Number two is that others besides this have to be in need of it. Others have to be in need of it. And number three is it has to be difficult for people to get to it. Difficult for people to get to it. So number one is that it's rare. Number two is that you need it. And number three, it's difficult to get it. He says, if you don't have all of these three in anything, then you can't call it Al-Aziz. So he gives an example. He said, there are many things that you can call Al-Aziz, but they must have all of these three within, within them, all of these qualities. Otherwise, you can't call it Aziz. For example, the sun that we have shining above us. He says, it is something which is, you know, we all need. But you find that it's not difficult to get the rays of the sun. So you can't call it Al-Aziz. Anything that you find that misses one of these qualities, you can't call it Al-Aziz. So in terms of Allah Azza wa Jal, He is definitely something which is rare because there's nothing like Him. He's rare in the sense that there's nothing, absolutely nothing like Him. Number two, the fact that we all need Him, that is very true. And the fact to get to Him is difficult, meaning, what I mean by this is that, you know, to get all your du'as answered, or to get whatever you want in terms of your own murad, or your own intentions fulfilled through Him, is not an easy thing. Yes, you can get many of them done, but for you to get all of them done is not, not an easy thing, which is something that I've mentioned before. Um, so this is the meaning of Al-Aziz which Imam Ghazali rahimahullah has given and Imam Qurtubi has quoted. And another thing of Al-Aziz, the meaning of Aziz is that it's the, in terms of the, the high value that it has, Nafasat al-Qadr, which means that it is not only rare but it's very, very, very valuable. That is Al-Aziz. So Allah Azza wa Jal is someone to us very, very valuable. We need him in, in many, I mean, in fact, we need him for everything. Then Allah says, now since, so then Imam Qurtubi says that Allah Azza wa Jal, he points out to the fact that if you want to get dignity for yourself, you have to go through Allah. This is in Surah Fatir, ayah number 10. Man kana yuridu al-izza, falillahi al-izza tu jami'ah. Whoever wants dignity to Allah belongs all dignity. So, this has been used in several places of the Qur'an um, to show where the source of dignity is. And one of the places where Allah uses it is that the munafiqs thought that they could go to their, their allies, 
They could go to the mushriks, the polytheists. They could make friendship with uh, with the non-Muslims, and they will be they will get dignity. Allah said in the Quran, in the near the end of the I think it's the end of the fifth juz, He said, "Ayab taguna indahum al izza." Are they are they searching? Are they looking for any dignity with these other people? فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا Because to Allah has all dignity. If you want to find any thing that will give you dignity, Allah has all of it. How, you know, subhanAllah, this is, this is the real tawheed. The real tawheed is, I don't see anyone's dignity except that Allah has given them dignity. This is real tawheed. That's why the real ulama, to, for them to go to a king... And for them to go to a pauper or a poor person, they saw no difference. The real ulama, they saw no difference. They saw in fact that if Allah, Allah is the one that gave dignity to the king, and Allah is the one that, that takes dignity away whenever he wants. So who are these people who think that they've got dignity? It is only Allah that gives them dignity. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, one of the, one of the, city, one of the cities that he lived in at one point, the king asked him to come to his palace and for him to give tuition to his, to his child, the prince. Imam Bukhari rahimullah, he said what? He said, Ilm knowledge does not travel to anyone's home. Knowledge doesn't travel to anyone's home. He said, people have to leave their home to gain knowledge. So he said, you want the prince to learn from me? Fine, send the prince to me. Send the prince to me. I'm not going to come to your palace and to, to tuition your, your child. Send the prince to me if he wants to come. Because knowledge doesn't travel for anyone. People travel for knowledge. So this is one of the things that the early ulama have, have you know, the salaf have, have clearly sh- shown to us that Izzah, dignity, is not with anyone. It is only with Allah Azza wa Jalla. And He chooses who He wants to give it to and how long He wants to give it, give it to them. One of the things that you could have is that the, 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 the politics around you, that surround you, whether it's social politics, family politics, global politics, whatever it is, it can bring you down. Mentally it can bring you down. And he used to bring Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam down. He used to have an effect on his on his mind. Said so, Allah said to him in the Quran in in several different places. He said, but one of the places, "Wala yahzun ka qauluhum inna al-izzat lillahi jamia." Wala yahzun ka qauluhum. Again, Surah I think it's in Surah Fatir, it's Ayah 65. The Surah has not been written there, but nevertheless, "Wala yahzun ka qauluhum." Let not their statements that they're making about you put you in grief. Let, that, let, not, let not their statements make you grievous over what they've said. And for you to sit there with a constrained heart. Yeah, let not, because, inna izzata lillahi jamia, because I've got dignity. Eventually I'm going to make your enemies fall on their faces. Eventually I'm going to keep your name high. Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, gave him so many different uh, indications in the Quran that he would do that. And eventually that's what happened. Where are his enemies today? They're all gone, finishing history, they're in Jahannam. And where is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Well, he's in the highest of abode. Yeah, this is the, the ayah in Surah Nisa 139, which I was referring to earlier. الَّذِينَ يَتَّخِذُونَ الْكَافِرِينَ أَوْلِيَاءِ مِن دُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ If you want to find any dignity with the, with, with the uh, people who have disbelieved in his message, disbelieved in Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and you want to make, take them your allies, but you don't want to take their believers as your allies, then Allah says, You can go and search for dignity wherever you want, but you will only find it with myself. I only have the one, I'm the only the one who's the possessor of this, this dignity. So, whosoever, Imam Qurtubi says, whosoever will, will come to Allah Azza wa Jal and make him the source of dignity, he will find dignity in this world and in the next. <coughs> Otherwise, you may be even disgraced and ashamed in the next world when Allah will say, what, you thought that you had dignity? SubhanAllah, this is one part in the Quran in Surah, Surah Dukhan. Ayah number 44 to 43. The surah is 44 itself. And you find Allah says, Inna shajarat al-zaqoom ta'amul athim. In Jahannam, Allah will feed the people of Jahannam. Some of them, He will feed them the fruit of this, of this tree called zaqoom. It's a very bitter fruit, thorny fruit, and it will get stuck in their throats, and it will be very difficult for them to gulp down. For many hundreds of years, it will stay inside their throat. 
till eventually they will start begging Allah for, for, for water and then Allah will take the boiling water from Jahannam, then He will give it to them and when He gives it to them, they, they're desperate they're dead because this fruit is so thorny, it goes in, they're hungry, they, they, need, they need to eat. So then Allah gives them this, this thorny fruit, it gets stuck in the throat, then they take this boiling water, it's so boiling, when it comes towards their face, hum fiha kalihun. Allah says that their upper lip then becomes stuck to their to their forehead, and the bottom lip gets gets swollen and you know just just shrinks and gets stuck to their chin. And they take this water because they want to get this thorny uh, fruit down. And when it goes down, it 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 takes it takes the thorny fruit down. But you know how boiling this water is? It's been boiling for 500 years. At the bottom of one hadith, and it's, a, it's the accumulation of what? It's a whole, all their pus, their blood, their tears, their urine, whatever has been falling down. It's the, it's under water there. It's all the mixture of that. Allah gives it to them. They drink it. And when they drink it, it burns their whole intestines. It burns them. In one hadith, it says that it comes out of their back back passage and another hadith says that it goes down through their thighs and burns whatever all, all the inner side of their thighs until it comes out of their their toes it pulls out of their toes so that's when in the according to the Quran Allah says what when he gives them this fruit he says to them Thuq innaka antal azizul karim taste this taste this because you are someone with dignity in the world weren't you you thought you had dignity Whatever they were up to in the world, and they thought they got the pride, they've got the dignity, they can do what they want. Allah said, okay, you know, you carry on, you carry on until you get, you get to me. And when they get to him, then he will show them who really has the dignity. Because he has said in the Holy Quran, Surah Qasas, 28th Surah, Ayah number 83, تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا We have made the Akhirah, the next life, for those people who do not, who do not be proud and mighty on this earth and do not cause corruption on this earth we have created that for them so to get dignity you only go through Allah Azza wa Jal and He is the source of that and He says that even if you O believers you don't help the religion of Allah Allah is not left alone this is an ayah in Surah Ma'idah verse number 54 so uh, Surah number 5 verse number 54 Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu O you who believe مَنْ يَرْتَدَّ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِ Whichever one of you will revert from this deen and go away from this deen. You're going to say, I don't want Islam anymore. You're going to turn against me. Turn against the Qur'an. Turn against the believers. And you move away. <coughs> and you forsake this deen. Allah says, فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ <coughs> Allah will bring about a people, a new nation, a new people, non-Muslims. He'll give, put, he'll put, Islam in their hearts. They will become believers. You don't want to believe? Fine, go away. I'll bring, bring new Muslims. Who will be what? يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ They'll love me, I will love them. He said, أَذِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَعِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ They will be humble to the believers and they will be ruthless against the disbelievers. I will do that. I, I am the one who controls the hearts and I can do that. And subhanAllah al-Azim, if we don't want to be part of the dignity of this deen, Allah will replace us. So we look to Allah through His power to be dignified, to get dignity from Allah, to, to seek that only from Him, Allah Azza wa Jal. And the hadith is very clear, مَن تَوَاضَعَ لِلَّهِ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ Whosoever, in hadith of Muslim, whosoever is humble for the sake of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal gives them a height and He he will raise them in this world, not only in this world, but He will raise them in the next world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these names uh, make us people who are people who have dignity and find dignity only and power only to be with Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the truth, uh, the, the truth Tawheed. Jazakum Muhammad, inshallah, next week 7.30 we'll carry on with Jab- Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir, Al-Khaliq. We'll continue with these names next week inshallah at 7.30. I'll see you then. Jazakum Muhammad, wa akhi da'wan, alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm.